In this last video in our series, we'll be answering the question, what now? Jesus died, he rose from the dead a long time ago. So what are we supposed to be doing now? We will answer that question on this last video in our series of Jesus Basics. Welcome to Jesus Basics, who, what, and why it makes a difference. I'm Joe Green speaking to you from South Hadley, Massachusetts. This is the 12th and final video in a series designed to help you consider one of the most famous people of all time, Jesus Christ. And we do that by looking into the Gospel of John. There is a discussion guide in the description that will help you in your personal study or group study. Well, the previous video, we talked about Jesus' resurrection and the end of John's Gospel. Today, we're going to circle back to chapters 15 and 17 to close out our series. And we do that because these chapters are a part of what's called the Farewell Discourse. I mentioned this in previous videos, but the Farewell Discourse is when Jesus, he's saying farewell to his disciples. He's preparing them because he's about to depart from them because he's going to be killed and crucified on the cross. He's going to depart from them, be resurrected, but then go to the Father. And he wants to prepare them of, well, what are they supposed to do now? So what's interesting is that we're kind of in that same time period. Jesus died. He rose from the dead. He's, he's uh, with the heavenly Father. So, so now what are we supposed to do? Jesus answers that question in the farewell of this course, which goes all the way from John chapter 13, after the foot washing, to John chapter 17. But today, we're going to focus down on John 15, 1 through 12. And if we're asking Jesus, Jesus, what are we supposed to be doing now? He answers that question with an I am statement. Again, something else we talked about in a previous video. But he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He uses this metaphor to describe what's next. What's next will basically remain connected to Jesus and bear much fruit. That's what he says in John 15, 1 through 12. I'll read it and it'll be on your screen. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and uh, the word abide can also be translated remains, whoever remains in me and I in him, he is it that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So what are we to do now? Jesus answers, remain connected to Jesus. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, how are we supposed to do that? He, he died, he rose from the dead, and now he's with the heavenly Father. Well, the fact that Jesus lives, that he did rise from the dead, he's alive. He's not just some dead teacher. No, he lives and he's with the Father. And if you read the whole farewell discourse, and I hope you do, all chapters 13 through 17, one of the themes that Jesus keeps referring to is the Holy Spirit. He says, I will not leave you orphans. I'm leaving you, but I'm going to send another helper, another advocate, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is to be to his followers as Jesus was when he uh, walked in the flesh with them. Uh, so we can remain connected to Jesus. And he's saying that's the key. What you're supposed to do now is to remain connected to me and bear fruit. Well, how do we do that? A couple things that he points out. One is we remain connected to the truth, the truth and the understanding of God's place in the universe, of who Jesus is, and that he's the only one who's worthy to be number one in our lives. He is the vine. The Father is the vine dresser. That means that you're not the vine, I'm not the vine, but also your career is not the vine, uh, your bank account is not the vine, any earthly relationship is not the vine. And if we make anything else the source of that 
the source of the rich eternal life that we have in Christ, it will disappoint us. We'll become burned out because it doesn't have the juice. It doesn't have the, the sap, the spirit that a branch needs to, to live and to bear fruit. And that's why our, the key is to grow closer in connection to the vine, to Jesus. And because of that, that picture of a, a vine and branches, a branch doesn't need to try harder to bear fruit, right? It just naturally bears fruit by being attached closely to the vine. So too or is Jesus saying the key is to be connected to me. And apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you'll wither and die. And, and the only good thing will be, to, you know, to be used for firewood. Um, but if you're remaining in Jesus, you'll naturally bear fruit. Now, how do we do that? How do we stay connected to him? How do we draw closer to him? He mentions a few things. And I'm going to put this on the screen um, as, as kind of a list. Jesus talks about if you remain in his words, you remain in him. And so in verse 3, it says, Already you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Already you're pruned, so you're already able to bear fruit because you're remaining in his word, his words. In fact, that's what we're doing now, right? We're looking at Jesus' words. We're remaining in him, drawing close to him through his word. Also, though, in, in, in verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. So again, that's the key is abiding, remaining in Jesus' word. He also mentions prayer so that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Ask whatever you wish. Yeah, that's prayer. That's when you talk to God. That's how we draw closer to, to, do, excuse me, to Jesus. Uh, the other thing is obedience. Verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you will abide. You'll remain in my love. And then finally, if you love people, right? We love others. Number uh, Verse 12, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So these are the ways that we draw closer to God. We draw closer to Jesus. And this love, let's, let's look at that last one, love others. This love is grounded in the Trinity. The Father loves the Son, the Son loves the Father, which is also why he obeys the Father. Uh, and then we get caught up in that love as Christ pours out his life in the ultimate display of self-sacrificial love. And if we truly get that, if we truly believe in that, we want to keep it going. As verse 9 says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Jesus is saying, this, you're, you're taking part in this eternal love and it's supposed to spill out. That love is meant to bear fruit, the fruit of love in us. And through us, as we then love other people as a reflection of God's love. That's a part of the fruit. It's the fruit that we bear when we're connected to the vine. Uh, and Because and the, the last verse couldn't be more clear. Verse 12, uh, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So as we daily remain connected to Christ in these ways, um, we grow naturally. We naturally produce fruit. And, and here's the thing about fruit is fruit is not just... Uh, good to eat, right? It's nourishing to us. But every piece of fruit, whether it's a grape, uh, is a seed packet. <laughs> in other words, there's so many seeds in each piece of fruit. And yes, it feeds people, but it also carries the potential for other vines to be planted in countless other places. And that's what happened after Jesus rose. The disciples went out and they made disciples in all the nations. And a vine, right, a vine of, of, of Jesus in his presence through the Spirit was planted in other places outside Jerusalem, like Samaria, in Corinth, in Rome. And now there are churches of Christ followers everywhere. So even here where I'm at in South Hadley, Massachusetts, uh, there is a vine growing. But every church, the vine is Jesus, if it's a true church. And the bonus to all of this is that this bearing fruit, it produces joy. Notice verse 11, Jesus says, these things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Blessing others, uh, being a conduit of God's love, um, living beyond ourselves, it's a joy. Um, it, love and joy, th those are two fruits of the Spirit, by the way, what we get from another part of the Bible called the book of Galatians. And so what now? Well, Jesus answers that. He says, well, remain connected to Christ and bear fruit to spread that fruit of truth, of love, of joy. And it's not about trying harder. It's about remaining connected to the vine.
And so now that we're done with this series, uh, what do we do now? Well, hopefully you have considered Jesus and believed. Right? That, that, because that was the purpose of John writing his gospel. He says, I've written these things that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that by believing you might have life in his name. And so if you have, if you've considered Jesus and you've believed in him, then you'll have the Holy Spirit and you have the word as a guide, as the farewell discourse talks a lot about these things. And so what's next for you is what Jesus talks about, drawing closer to him and bearing much fruit. And I also hope that as you've read the chapters, as you read along the chapters with us through the Gospel of John and you've read it in context, you see and you're able to get the basics for yourself. Uh, you were able to read the Bible in its context and through it to grow in your understanding of who Jesus was. And, and I would suggest that what's next for you would be going to the next book in, in the Bible, in the, in the canonical scriptures, is the book of Acts. Because the book of Acts talks about what did the early church do after Jesus rose from the dead? How did they go and bear fruit throughout, uh, throughout the known world at that time? It's a, next, a good next place. Now, of course, there's going to be some scriptures that you're going to have trouble understanding a little more than others, particularly certain books of the Old Testament, because it's so different and the time is so different. Um, you might have a little more trouble understanding, but you can still understand the basics of what God has revealed. And I hope that this series has helped you get the tools to do that with confidence. Um, and so, yes, I hope that this, throughout this series, you've considered one of the most famous people of all time, Jesus Christ, and that this last video has helped you see the, the fruitful growth that is next for you if you remain connected to Christ. And now, if you've found this video helpful, I invite you to like it. And I also invite you to let us know how you're doing in your own uh, faith journey. In the description, there is our website. Click on that. There's a Contact Us button on our webpage. Uh, I'd love to hear from you as you continue your journey. And thank you so much for joining us throughout this 12-video series called Jesus Basics.